then I will just move to present the small claims procedure and payment order according to Slovenian national law. That is to say, we are discussing our domestic um, regulation uh, on these two topics. Well, both of these procedures are actually special procedures provided for in the contentious civil procedure act. This means that uh, general uh, rules uh, of uh, civil procedure uh, will apply uh, if the uh, special rules do not provide otherwise. Uh, now, the small claims procedure um, is to be uh, established when the amount of the dispute does not exceed 2000 euros. Uh, but from within the scope, uh, disputes relating to immovable property, copyrights, uh, inventions, uh, competition disturbances, and so on, uh, are excluded. The competence for uh, entertaining such claims uh, lies with the local courts. These are courts of general jurisdiction, which usually uh, adjudicate on disputes uh, under 20,000 euros. Uh, there are several um, uh, specific rules in the interest of uh, efficiency and efficacy uh, of the procedure also pertaining to uh, the keeping of records uh, as well as the appealability of decisions. All of the decisions rendered uh, during the course of the dispute can only be appealed with a final appeal against the uh, last decision of the court. Now, in principle, um, this uh, procedure is also conducted in writing. Uh, claimants uh, must file the action and respondents must file the uh, defense plea. Uh, but uh, in addition to these two uh, applications, they only have one additional written application. Uh, meanwhile, both of the parties must uh, provide for all of uh, the facts of the case and the evidence uh, in the um, action vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, defense plea. No other evidence will then after be admitted. Now, uh, the uh, small claims procedure contains some special rules with legal fictions, uh, especially if no defense plea is um, actually uh, given by the uh, defendant, uh, then uh, the court surrenders a judgment on the basis of acknowledgement. This is in stark contra contrast with the general uh, rules of civil procedure where a judgment in default is rendered. Now, the when I said that the procedure is usually concluded in writing, I meant that uh, if no party demands, uh, requires uh, a hearing, then the court will not uh, actually uh, uh, issue uh, the parties uh, within, with a summons to a hearing and will conclude the proceedings uh, in writing, uh, judging its, uh, basing its judgment on the written applications of the parties. Now, this can only be done when uh, no dispute exists on the matter of the facts or if a dispute exists, but the court can conclude on the facts uh, already from the uh, actual uh, applications of the parties. Now, if the court does, um, uh, does schedule a hearing on the request of a party, uh, then there are a number of other legal fictions which come in handy, uh, depending on which party appears or does not appear in the process. So if claimant does not appear, then there is a judgment issue on the basis of relinquishment of his claim. If the defendant, on the other hand, does not appear, then the judgment will be rendered on the basis of acknowledgement. If neither of the parties appears, then it will be presumed, well, fictionalized, uh, that uh, there has been a withdrawal of action. Um, there are also a, num a number of more detailed rules, which I will not delve into too much. Uh, now, in small claims procedure, the judgment must be announced immediately after the completion of the main hearing. This is, again, in contrast with the general rules of um, contentious proceedings, where the judge has uh, an additional 30 days uh, time to issue a written judgment. Uh, the court must then um, reduce the judgment also in writing, but this judgment is basically a summary judgment. Uh, it does not contain all of the evidence of the uh, 
general uh, judgment, so to speak. There is also there are also important rules um, which limit the party uh, in its uh, remedy in its remedial factor. Uh, Competence. So, a judgment issued in small claims procedure can only be against uh, can only be appealed against on the grounds of severe violation of procedure and violation of substantive law. This means that this kind of judgment cannot be appealed against uh, for uh, on, the, on the grounds that uh, the facts of the case uh, were erroneously deduced. Uh, and lastly, uh, extraordinary remedies. The majority of them are excluded in small claims procedure. Now, moving on to payment order, once again, this is just a special procedure encapsulated within the uh, general um, contentions for uh, civil proceedings law act. Uh, the court will issue a payment order if the uh, claimant presents an authentic document. Now, uh, the official um, translation of the law actually provides for authentic instruments. However, I have used the term authentic document to distinguish it from the authentic instrument terminology as used by the Brussels 1A regulation. Uh, the court can issue the payment order regardless of the value in dispute, uh, but there's a difference if the non-documentary payment, uh, if the payment order is issued for a sum of less than 2,000 euros, then uh, a so-called non-documentary payment order can be issued where the claimant does not need to present a document. Now, uh, the uh, another distinction is that uh, a payment order can be issued by a legal secretary again in contrast with uh, general procedures where a judge is the one who renders the judgment uh, another distinction is also um, the uh, date for a voluntary performance by the debtor uh, usually this is uh, 15 days however uh, in payment order procedures this is reduced to eight days or correspondingly to three days when uh, the dispute involves uh, bills of exchange or checks as uh, as the documents previously stated now the payment order is served upon both parties and uh, until its issuance and until the, the actual service, uh, the payment order procedure is an ex parte procedure. This means that it will only become adversary if and when the debtor uh, will uh, produce an objection. Uh, well, the objection is basically um, its defense plea uh, in the proceedings. Now, uh, I would uh, skip uh, these. Um, these, uh, these slides here and move to the connection between the two procedures. Is there any? Well, yes, there is a slight connection. If the uh, debtor uh, produces a, an objection against the payment order, then the procedure can move to a small claims pr procedure if the original sum was not in excess of 2,000 euros. Now, the last uh, thing I'd like to address is an application for enforcement based on authentic documents. This is basically a two-part procedure which uh, conjoins um, both the procedure for uh, the issuance of a payment order with the procedure um, allowing for enforcement. In Slovenia, judgments and decisions are not um, directly enforceable, so to speak. Uh, the uh, creditor must move to enforcement proceedings where the court will first issue a, an enforcement decision. Within that decision, the court uh, first allows for uh, enforcement. Uh, now, this kind of uh, procedure, which I have uh, put on to the PowerPoint, uh, co combines first the uh, payment order procedure with the enforcement procedure, with the first step of the enforcement procedure, that is the allowing of the enforcement. Uh, and this way, um, the, the, the claimant does not need to move to a separate enforcement procedure. Uh, but as you can see on my next slide, uh, this also has an effect uh, on the uh, remedies which the debtor can use. The debtor can attack either the payment order part of the enforcement order or the enforcement order stricto sensu, so the part allowing for enforcement. Depending on which part uh, the 
adaptable um, attack, so to speak, uh, the continuation of the process will depend. Uh, if the debtor attacks already the payment order, then it will uh, proceed as a usual objection against the payment order. That means that we will proceed to a uh, litigation. And within that litigation, the court will adjudicate on the claim. Uh, if the debtor, on the other hand, attacks only the enforcement order, the stricto sensu part, uh, then the procedure will continue as a uh, as an objection against the enforcement order. Uh, that was a brief uh, summary of uh, our small claims procedure and um, uh, payment order procedures. Uh, I hope uh, it has been. Um, a good experience for you as, as it has been for me. Uh, thank you and back to you, Marius. So thank you, Denis, for presenting uh, uh, the national regulations in Slovenia and I will take it from here and move on uh, regarding the European order for payment procedure. So, I mean, the first question I would like to answer to is uh, which court in, in Slovenia is competent? So we have basically, I can say two and three. So the answer is quite strange, but yes, we have the local court, which is called Ukraina Sudisha, uh, which is the jurisdiction to adjudicate in dispenses of property claims when the value of the item in question does not exceed 20,000 euros. So you have to put this in mind. This, uh, the sum is 20,000 euros. So if a claim comes, yes, and it is under 20,000 euros, absolutely you have to go uh, in the Slovenian local court with this claim. So only a local court in this case will have jurisdiction. However, when the claim exceeds 20,000 euros, then the local court won't be very helpful here because the jurisdiction goes directly to the district court, which is in Slovenian. I mean, for some Slovenian legal terminology, it will be Okrožna Sudisha. Sudisha meaning court, yes? So the district court will be then, uh, will have then jurisdiction and the, the, the amount has to exceed 20,000 euros. Now you have to keep in mind that in case the, the I mean the, the the situation the case studies regards a commercial law, then only the district law at the first instance we have the, the jurisdiction. So we have to be very careful here. So if we are talking not only about uh, civil procedures but commercial uh, cases, then only the district court at the first instance has jurisdiction. However, we have to add also uh, that the court, the local court of Ljubljana, has exclusive jurisdiction, and this is very important and very interesting, the local court of Ljubljana has exclusive jurisdiction in case, uh, the case we are talking uh, concerns uh, enforcement procedure based on an authentic document. And what is an authentic document? Uh, my colleague, Denis, has uh, given the, the explanations and the definitions, but I can give you some additional examples regarding it. So it means uh, some invoices or bill of exchange or a check protest or an extract from accounting record certified by the responsible person and so on and so forth. So just a document uh, proving that you, you, you must have a certain amount of money. So in this case, when you have access to this document, then only the court, the local court, let's, let me remind it to you, has exclusive jurisdiction in this case. So overall to this question, we can say, well, in Slovenia it's very diverse. You have uh, three different courts. Let's say two actually, the local one for less than 20,000, the, this one for over 20,000. And in case you have a claim with uh, authentic document, then it has to be in Ljubljana, not in Maribor. And in case you are talking about uh, commercial cases, commercial procedures, then it has to be uh, only the district court at the first instance. So this is it for this part. The next one, and you have to excuse me because uh, if I put my presentation on the full screen, then I will have some bugs like my colleague, uh, I mean, had that problem at the beginning. So I think this kind of demonstration of my screen is good for you. Uh, regarding the next point I would like to abort with you, uh, what are the estimated costs for an EOP in your member state? So I was uh, uh, telling Carmen that it's quite expensive in, in, in Spain, but it's not so cheap also in Slovenia. <laughs> That's the, I mean, a question calls a question, as they say. So uh, in Slovenia, it's all regulated. Uh, the exact amount of fees is regulated uh, in the Court Fees Act, which is called in Slovenian. So definitely, I'm teaching you some Slovenian words. Zakon uh, also the tax. I mean, tax, you have an idea, it's about tax. So it's about the court. And the zakon, the zakon is just the law. 
So after this presentation today, you must be able to speak some fluent Slovenian word. <laughs> so uh, I got this part, the cost. So the regulation is uh, in in this act, in the court fees act, uh, the Zakon of Sudan Act. And the quotient for the European order for payment procedure is 1.2. Now this is very interesting uh, because it means it is not a fixed amount. I have seen throughout the presentations of our partners that some countries do have fixed amount. Some countries don't have a fixed amount. In Slovenia, it's not, I mean, we can say it is fixed because we have a quotient. It means it depends from the proceedings. It depends from a case to another. For example, to give you uh, a, a, an example of the calculation of the court fee, if the value of the subject or the, the proceedings is 500 euros, for example, which will fall into uh, the small claim procedure, for example, the amount of the cost fee for the substance will be 31 euros, 31, 20 euros, basically. So you see 531 euros. In the case it is 1,150, then the cost fee will be 50.40 euros. So it has to be calculated according to the quotient, which is 1.2. And in the next slide, I will show you because there is a graph uh, explaining this. So we are moving. So regarding the, pri the, the price, the price is uh, calculated according to the quotient uh, written in the, the tariff heading of the uh, Court Fees Act. The next point is, uh, what are the national service measures in your map in Slovenia? And how long does it take to service the document? So the Slovenian regulation here is basically the same as the EOP and DSP, and the service usually takes 30 days, basically one calendar a month. 30 days is usually what is takes, what is enough uh, to serve it. So it's not so long like all the member states, I won't say the name, and it's not so short actually, but it's it turns around uh, 30 days uh, for for the service of the documentation here and to the question like i mean these questions repeat itself a bit how long does it take does it usually take for an eop to be issued in slovenia and the duration so if the form of the commencement of the procedure is properly filled i mean there is no mistake because you know if uh, uh, the plaintiff uh, uh, files and there is a mistake where he get another form from the court that uh, he needs to, to to address and i have a case study that i will address at the end of this presentation where we will see that there was a mistake i mean not a mistake but the court thought there was a mistake and the plaintiff uh, couldn't be able uh, to, to to address um the request of the court and then something happened i won't spoil you right now but yes so in the case the the, the eop is properly filed and everything is good then it should be 30 days as we mentioned if the form is not filled properly and the 30 days uh, term in which the op should be issued is extended on the time the claimant requires to complete the form the duration of the service which should take 30 days should also be taken into account moreover the defendant has additionally 30 days to lodge the statement of opposition to the EUP. So this is just the, uh, the, the usual regulation uh, for the EUP. This is not only in Slovenia, but it's everywhere, depending to the, uh, to the system. And uh, to the question, what are the necessary requirements to enforce or to be awarded an EUP? Well, uh, we have to know that in Slovenia, the enforcement is uniformly governed by the Enforcement and Security of Civil Claims Act, which is called, and again, this is I'm telling you in Slovenia. <laughs> I know. I know you won't maybe remember about this after uh, this lecture, but it's so important actually to to know this uh, this regulation. So it is Zakon or is Vesbe in Zavarovanya. Yes, the Z's we call it. It's interesting. I mean, for the students, it's easier. Like, what the Z's? Oh yes, so I know. So this is it. So this is just uh, in, in in English the Enforcement and Security of Civil Claims Act. So this act governs the necessary requirement to be awarded. And, uh, an European order for payment procedure and is basically the same regulation in most of the country. For example, uh, European order for payment is considered as an enforceable title, which it should be in most of the European Union countries. And under the general conditions, an enforcement title can be enforced if it contains information about the creditor, the debtor, and the subject. So this is so important because I will touch this uh, topic at the end of the presentation when I will present the case studies because the case, one of the case in ESCP, the small claim procedure, is about uh, the information because in most, I mean, in some cases it happens that the plaintiff doesn't have the real address 
of, of, uh, of the debtor, for example. So he doesn't know and what to do because the court will claim the address without the, the red address or the red information. It is also hard for the court uh, to move forward with the procedure. So what, how to deal with this and what are the, uh, the cases in Slovenia? We will talk about this in the next slide, in the upcoming slide. So as talking about uh, enforceability, when an enforceable title is a decision which does not stipulate the time limit for voluntary performance of the obligation, the time limit is determined by a court in its decision of enforcement. So this is very important because sometimes uh, the plaintiff doesn't know when his decision will be enforced and the court has to, uh, to state this. And this is the same also in other member countries, for example, in France. Yeah, so the next point, the next question uh, will be, is there a national procedure? And Dennis has already uh, spoken about it. And what are the procedures that are recognized in Slovenia? So we can say that uh, Slovenia recognized two procedures basically, and there is a difference. There is a difference between both of them. So a payment or the procedure is recognized by Article 431 and 441 of the Civil Procedure Act, which is called Zakon of Pravnem Postopku, Zepopo. So all our acts are, I mean, they start, I mean, this is a secret I'm giving you with Z because of Zakon, which is a law, the regulation. So you have a disease, the Zepopo. So if, if, if in case you have a proceeding with a Slovenian national, Slovenian company, and the jurisdiction will be, let's say, in, um, in, in Maribor or maybe in Ljubljana, in case uh, it has, you have an invoice and so on. So it has to start with Z somewhere. So you want, if, if, if you have the, the first uh, syllable or the first letter, you won't miss it. So in case of the payment or the procedure, yes, the Civil Procedure Act uh, is uh, enforced. And the second payment order that Slovenia recognized is an enforcement procedure based on an authentic document. And we have been speaking about this and my colleague also uh, spoke about it in his uh, presentation, and I have already given you some example. What is an authentic document? What does it mean? Why does Slovenia recognize it? And it means just you have an invoice, and somebody doesn't want to pay it, so you can, based on that invoice, uh, launch a, a procedure and get back your money. It can be a check that is protested. It can be any uh, invoices, any public document, an extract from a content record certified by the responsible person an authenticated private document or a written statement of income from employment. So everything that can be a proof, signed, official, I mean, recognized, yes, is uh, an enforcement procedure based on an authentic document. This is authentic document because it has been uh, recognized by the, the, the issuer. And yes, Slovenia recognized absolutely that, which, which makes a sense, actually, make a sense because when you have an invoice and you want to get your money and, the, the, the country says no, we don't recognize that this invoice, it will be very strange. So Slovenia does uh, recognize the payment or the procedure and uh, 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 procedures based on an authentic document. And as we said from the beginning of this uh, presentation, there is only one court in case we are talking about the authentic document and it is the local court in Ljubljana, not in Maribor, for the shame, <laughs> meaning we have to go to Ljubljana uh, for, for those cases. And uh, the usual, the usual days is three to four, uh, to four days for for the, for the issuance. So the main difference with, with, with these two procedures uh, is that there is no upper limit for the amount of the claims on the national law procedures. There is not a limit like five thousand, seven thousand, twenty thousand. There's no limit, and there are no standardized uh, standardized forms. Uh, for the filling of the document of the action under the national law procedures, which is a shame because the EOP and the ESP uh, in the form is very easier for, uh, for the plaintiff, for example, to fill. Uh, there is no need of, of lawyers. There is no need of translators. There is maybe sometimes, but may, mostly not because the forms are in different languages. And uh, I mean, any, anybody can fill, can lodge in an application, but over here, there is no standardization and um, yeah, that may be if to the question what to improve at the national level. level. So this can be something, for example, uh, to be improved. And then over here, we can take example on the EUP and ESCP. Uh, regarding the European small claims procedures uh, and, and the cost, so it's basically the same as I explained with the EUPP. 
you print out the four payment procedure. So I have a table, a graph for you to, to help you imagine a bit the, uh, the, the prices. So if the value of the model of the proceedings is, for example, 300 euros, so it will be 54, and we are talking about small claims here. Yeah, 54 and 54 euros, which is like, I mean, you, you, you can see the proportion. It, it, it's not so cheap, actually, it's not so cheap. Like, okay, yes, it's a bit cheaper than in Spain, but still it's not so cheap over here, according to the, I mean, to the national realities, right? So if the, the, the value is 600, then it goes a bit uh, higher. So what does it mean? The more you claim, <laughs> <laughs> the higher are the court fees, you know, so you better win in a way. So you don't just go to court just for fun, just to, to do an experiment. Um, I mean, yes, of course, but the higher is the is the value of the matter, uh, the, the, the higher you pay, which makes a sense actually in, in, in all the member states. So, for example, if you have uh, a claim of 2,500, since we are talking about the small claim procedure, then, then the court fee will be around 180 euros. So what about counter claim? Because all the, the participants have been so great talking about counter claims today. So we all do also do have basically the same thing. So there is a possibility, and it should be like that, actually. There's a possibility for a counter claim because in case you don't, you, you, you don't agree, you, you have the obligation and there should be a possibility uh, recognized by the regulations uh, to counter claim. So there is a possibility under the, the ESCP procedure, which is like for all the member states, the amount of the counter claim, however, shall not exceed the uh, 5,000 euros. The notion of the counter claim shall also be taken into account because this, I mean, it, it does make sense here. Because if the amount will exceed, then we are not talking about a small claims as well. We are not now going to a European order for payment procedure. So the, the counter claims, I mean, they are very limited. I mean, there is a possibility, but they have to be done according to uh, certain rules, certain regulations. And what are the remedies in, in these cases? Well, the appeal, and, and again here, I, I fully agree, agreed with uh, the foundings uh, of the research, uh, the appeal must be lodged within eight days. And please put this in, remember this, these eight days, because my colleague as well mentioned this, but we will see in the case that, that are coming now that this eight days might be problem, problematic. So the appeal must be lodged within eight days. You see, I mean, the must, must be. So if you don't do it, there's a problem over here. In eight days, you have eight days. And the judgment being served with the court delivered the judgment at first instance. Grounds for the appeal are limited, but they, are, they still do exist. And we will see, uh, in, I mean, what are the excuses <laughs> to use this word? What are the grounds yeah, to, to be legal you can use or what might be the excuses you can use also to get an appeal, for example. So in case you are granted an appeal, in case you want to lodge an appeal, the higher court, which is, imagine the word court, you already know it in Slovenia, which is Sodisha. Yeah, uh, the higher court is the Vicia. So Vicia in Slovenia are competent uh, to, to decide on your appeal. Yes, because then the, the first answer has failed you, then you have to go to a higher level in order to get your appeal in case of ESCP. Uh, so we'll move to the cases now, more or less, and I would just want to show you what can happen and uh, so, uh, regarding the cases, we have we have some cases. We don't have a lot of cases since I mean this, the uh, the small claim procedures are not so famous. Because one of the reasons that we have uh, found that throughout this uh, this training program is that uh, where the sums is small and people don't want to to lodge, uh, you know, uh, to, to 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 file for I don't know five hundred. 1,000, so I mean, or 150 is not interesting <laughs> for them. So that might be an issue, but we still have some cases. So the first case I would like to talk about is uh, uh, a case regarding the EUP, uh, European Order for Payment Procedure. And what happens in this case is that the plaintiff appeals against the decision due to in court application, okay, of uh, one second, of substantive law and the violation. Of the provision of the procedure and proposes a change of annulment of the decision. That's why he he lodged. So what happened in this case? What happened in this case? And why did he uh, did he file an appeal? The case is about 
a, a part, part A, which actually won his case, but has from the court the obligation to pay the court fees. So we have known, we know that uh, in some countries you have to pay before you even get uh, granted the application. But he, he went till the end of his application and then received a mail asking him to pay under certain days, uh, the court fees in order to get granted uh, the enforceability of the decision. So basically he won and it usually recognized that when a, a party wins the case, the, the, the defendant is the, is, the, is the party that is requested to pay the fees. And over here, the court did, didn't, the court of his estate, of course, did want to allow uh, him uh, that. And uh, he, he lodged an, an appeal uh, at the higher court and he got rewarded because the higher court recognized that since uh, the plaintiff has won the case, he has to be granted uh, the enforceability. He has to be granted the enforceability. And if the court wanted the fees to be paid, they have to be paid before, not at the end of the procedure, but way before. So in this case, the, the, the claimant has been granted and the court has to deliver the enforceability and then the defendant will have to pay all the fees as it is usually done. So this is a very simple case and uh, it's, uh, the, its decision is not uh, a great break-in or totally new uh, to legal re regulations. And the second case uh, regarding ESCP, uh, the, the sparkling procedure, uh, was about a Slovenian and uh, a, a, a German. Yes, it, this was in the individuals, not, not company. And as I, as I said at the beginning of our, our seminar that we have a lot of cases with uh, uh, German companies or German individuals and, and, and Austrians because the, the economic ties between the countries are, are very high. A lot of Slovenians work in Austria, we are neighbors and a lot of them work in, uh, you know, in, in Germany and vice versa. So, uh, the, I mean, the part actually worked in, uh, in Germany and what happened? What happened and why did he, uh, did, did he load? So, First, the court has to establish if this is a cross-border case, because as the dean said in the, in the, at the beginning of this training, it's not always so easy to find this uh, cross-border um, definition, this cross-border uh, fact in, 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 in the cases, because some people are officially living, they have the, uh, the residency of a country while they, are, they were originally for another country, but to, to, to be sure that the case is cross border is not also, always uh, very easy. So the court has decided that this case is definitely uh, cross border as the plaintiff stated in the order that the defendant reside in the Republic of Germany. Yeah, so the court, uh, well, I mean, the court uh, stated that the, the plaintiff did not mention the address of the defendant. So the plaintiff lodged a claim, but unfortunately, in in, in, in while filing uh, the procedures, the forms, he was not able to mention the address of the defendant because he didn't know, and the address he knew was not a correct address. So the court came back to him to with another form, of course, to to change the form because the address was missing and he was given eight days. That was the eight days we are talking about that in case of small claims, the, the defendant, the, the plaintiff or the plaintiff has eight days to fail to answer in order for the procedure to move forward. So eight days were not enough because the, the plaintiff, of course, got into in touch with the embassy of Slovenia in Germany with all the necessary uh, parties, necessary institutions that could help him find the address of, uh, of the defendant, but was not able. Then the course after the eight days, uh, just canceled the procedures. And then the, the, the plaintiff uh, lodged an appeal and was granted the appeal. And that's the, the funny part of, of this situation because the, the higher court they decided that the court itself has the mission to help uh, the plaintiff to find the address because the court is, has also the interest to make everything right, everything correct. Not all the burden has to be on the plaintiff, but the court has to assist, actually, the plaintiff, where, depending on its ways, no matter how it is, no matter how, how it, you, because the, the, the member state have to, to cooperate and the court has this, this, uh, this direct link, the possibility to go to the higher level in Germany, to contact them, to find the right address in order to serve 
uh, the decision. So the court didn't do that. It didn't want to help. It just gave eight days and that's it. After the eight days, cancels everything. So at the appeal, the higher court decided that yes, the, the, the plaintiff was right and that the court should cooperate and assist him uh, in this case. So as we can see, of course, after eight days, usually not, but they are a student in the grounds where uh, the plaintiff can, can can be granted an appeal and still win cases. So that mostly all for uh, for the Slovenian regulations.